Falklands, Narrative of Southeast Asian Art Public Program. This webinar has been produced for Stories Across Rising Lands, an exhibition of contemporary art in Southeast Asia developed by Museum Merchant with the support of ASEAN, ASEAN Foundation, and ASEAN Korea Corporation Fund. Coinciding with the exhibition Stories Across Rising Lands, this panel discussion presents some leading curators, critics, and art historians who will delve into the challenges of articulating narratives of Southeast Asian art, histories, and region. The exhibition explores what the curators Asep Topan and Jong ok Yeon describe as small narratives, which consists of the practices and research approaches by artists towards the everyday and their environments, and a, an approach that is in contrast to the grand perspective of established histories. For this panel, we will discuss the approaches and entanglements and possibilities of writing narratives of the region, through an examination of recent projects and research of its, its panelists. Joining us today, we have uh, Parah Wardani, Nuraini Julia Stuti, Patrick Givalres, and Simon Sun, who will share their perspective on Southeast Asian art. One of the curators of the exhibition, Asep Topan, will be moderating the program today. Asep is the curator at Museum Machan. He graduated with a BA in printmaking from Institute Kesenian Jakarta and a Master of Fine Arts in Curatorship from Institute Technology Bandung. He is also a recipient for the Apple Curatorial Program in the Netherlands. Asep is also a lecturer at Institute Kesenian Jakarta. Without further ado, over to you, Asep. Thank you, Widi, uh, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Good morning, Tumba Nuning in Amsterdam. Uh, uh, my name is Asep Topan. I'm a curator at the Museum Machan, and I will be the moderator for this program. On behalf of Museum Machan, I'm glad to welcome you all to this afternoon program, Stories Across Rising Land, Narrative of Southeast Asian Art. This program is presented in conjunction with our current exhibition uh, titled Stories Across Rising Land at Museum Machan that I co-curate with Jeong ok -jeon. We are honored to welcome curators, researchers, and scholars from Southeast Asia for this conversation. I particularly would like to thank education and public program staff, Renjana Widya Kirana and Galu Anindito, as well as entire Museum Chan team for their help bringing this program together. The exhibition Stories Across Rising Land is commissioned by Connect ASEAN and supported by the ASEAN Republic of Korea Cooperation Fund. We also thank our patrons, members, and supporters like you who helped make this program possible. Now, I will share brief biographical notes about each panelist speaking this afternoon. Farah Wardani is an art historian and curator who currently serves as the, as the program director of Jakarta Biennale 2021 on behalf of the Visual Art Committee of Jakarta Arts Council or Dewan Kesenian Jakarta. Previously, Farah served as the technical as the executive director of Indonesian Visual Art Archive or IFAA in Yogyakarta, with works including the IFAA Digital Archive, the first digital archive of contemporary art in the country. Farah was also the artistic director of for Jakarta for Yogyakarta Biennale in 2013, and was the assistant director for the Resort Center of National Gallery Singapore from 2015 until 2019. Her work at NGS includes the portfolio of building the museum's Rotunda Library and Archive and NGS Collection Search Portal. Patrick Flores is a professor of art studies at the Department of Art Studies at the Univers University of the Philippines, which he chaired from 1997 to 2003 and curator of the Vargas Museum in Manila. He is the director of the Philippine Contemporary Art Network. He was one of the curators of Under Construction, New Dimension in ASEAN Art in 2000 and the Guangzhou Biennale Position Papers in 2008. He was a visiting fellow at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, DC in 1999 and an ASEAN Public Intellectual Fellow in 2004. Among his publications are Painting History, Revision in Philippine Colonial Art in 1999, Remarkable Collection, Art History and the National Museum in 2006, and Past Peripheral Curation in Southeast Asia in 2008. He was a grantee of the ASEAN Culture Council in 2010. He co-edited the Southeast Asian issue with John Key 
for third track for, for third text in 2011. He convened in 2013 on behalf of the Clark Institute and the Department of Art Studies of the University of the Philippines, the Conference Histories of Art History in Southeast Asia in Manila. He was a guest scholar of the Getty Research Institute in Los Angeles in 2014. He curated an exhibition of contemporary art from Southeast Asia and Southeast Europe titled South by Southeast and the Philippine Pavilion at the Venice Biennale in 2015. He was artistic director of Singapore Biennale 2019 and is the curator of the Taiwan Pavilion for Venice Biennale in 2022. Simon Soon is senior lecturer in art history at the Visual Studies Program, Faculty of Creative Arts, University of Malaya. He researched across 19th to 20th century modern and contemporary art in the Malay Archipelago. He has written on various topics related to 20th century art across Asia and occasionally curated exhibitions, most recently titled Bayangnya Itu Timbul Tenggelam, Photography Culture, Cultures in Malaysia. He is a team member of Malaysia Design Archive, a repository, education, and research platform on visual cultures of the 20th century. Sometimes he makes art and participate in exhibition. He spent most of the time reading all newspaper and magazine, photographing roadside shrine, playing with Instagram filter, and building online course on his website, the bawahangin.cargo.site. Nuraini Julia Stuti uh, is a translocal practicing researcher and writer focusing on art organization, activism, illegality, and alternative cultural production. Julia Stuti co-founded Kunci Studi Study Forum and Collective in Yogyakarta, Indonesia in 1999. She obtained a PhD from Institute of Cultural Anthropology and Development Sociology, Leiden University in May 2019, titled Common People, Managing Music and Culture in Contemporary Yogyakarta. Kunci's long-term project include the School of Improper Education. She has published numerous book, chapter, and article. Her latest article, The Studying Turn, Free Scholar as Tool for Inclusion, is published in an unedited volume of The Force of Art, Valis, November 2020. Her individual and collective works have been presented and published in Haus der Kuntuler Duel, New uh, Gessel Schaff for Building the Kunst, Asia Cultural Center, Parasite, Inter-Asia Cultural Studies, and Critical Times. In 2020, she joined University of Amsterdam with a postdoctoral fellowship in uh, Wadling Public Culture, the Art and Social Innovation at the Amsterdam School of Cultural Analy Analysis. During the fellowship, she developed a research of independent initiative which worked to develop radical vision of community-based living strategies through practicing radical pedagogies and, ecology and ecological archivist thinking. She also developed Domestic Notes, a publication-based project uses domestic and migrant spaces as site to discuss everyday politics, organization, and massive support system and alternative cultural production. With her family, she ran a small press, Reading Sideway Press, to publish work and, trans and translation on art, sport, and literature. And now, um, I would like to share a few practical notes before we begin. This program will last for around two hours in total, including 10 minutes presentation from each panelist to be followed by Q&A session. If there is any point in the conversation you would like to ask the question, please feel free to use Q&A function by clicking the Q&A button located at bottom of your screen to type your question. Please note that this program also being recorded. So your, your, so your question will be recorded as well. Our speakers will answer question during the Q&A session at the end of the program. Without further ado, I would like to invite all the panelists to take the mic starting the presentation with Mbak Farah Wardani. Mbak Farah, the screen is here. Thank you so much, Aset, and it's uh, my greatest honor. Thank you so much, um, Museum Macan. Thank you, uh, Renjana, and also my dear colleagues here who I haven't met for more than a year because we are in a time warp. <laughs> uh, it's so good to see you guys and also for this special topic. Um, I do believe that three other speakers have more expertise than me in terms of these uh, 
yeah, this Southeast Asian context. But uh, but I do, I did have some share of uh, experience, especially the last, uh, I mean, like, uh, yeah, the last five years, sort of, uh, when I was in the National Gallery Singapore, uh, after my years at IVA, uh, which, uh, which involved um, my work scope in building the, uh, the library and archive at National Gallery Singapore. Uh, Sir Patrick and Simon were uh, regular there. <laughs> you guys were so familiar. <laughs> uh, and, and also like a, they they know they they know the content actually. So this is a an old slide. Uh, I mean, like rather old slide that I will be presenting. Uh, actually, Nuning, Nuning also. I think I think you joined. I think, I think you saw this uh, when we met in Taipei uh, <laughs> in the spring workshop. So yeah. So it it's. I think it's good for me to share this again in in this uh, this time, and I hope that it will bring up quite some discussion and also give something, uh, yeah, a start to start with, uh, especially since I'm the start of the conversation. Uh, I'm okay. I'm gonna just share it. So, you guys, you guys can see it. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we so, can see. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Slide show mode. Yeah. So. Basically, uh, this is this uh, this this presentation is based on this uh, essay uh, that I was commissioned by uh, University of Indonesia. Uh, uh, the the Wacana is the Journal of Humanities Department of Indonesia. Uh, when they collaborate with KITLB for the KITLB Jakarta 50th anniversary, so it's like two years ago. Uh, so it's it's more on more like a report. Basically, but uh, now it, it becomes more like a, like a, it's like a memoir of like trying to uh, of, you know like uh, my experience based on my experience trying to build the uh, the archive uh, of Eva and especially at the National Gallery of Singapore. Uh, so, if for you guys who are probably not familiar, uh, I oh, I do lots of things in the arts as Asep introduced, <laughs> but. One of the one of my main work uh, that I feel really attached with uh, that it becomes part of my life is uh, is the art archive, uh, which I spent nine years in Jogja with the Indonesian Visual Art Archive. Uh, we built this uh, online platform. You can check it out. It's still on, it's still running. Uh, and uh, and then for five years I stayed in Singapore, uh, working at the National Gallery of Singapore. It, and, by then it was called the Resource Center, but now it's called the Library and Archive of National Gallery. So uh, I built uh, with the team. I built this basically this, uh, the the SOP and also uh, the uh, the system of uh, of the database and also do digitizing of uh, uh, of archives of Southeast Asian uh, of Southeast Asian artists. Uh, and then we built this library, which were made uh, from Ooh. the original library of the Supreme Court, and we turned it into uh, to put uh, the, the the reference collection and also put the the archive uh, search uh, portal there for people so that it can be accessed by the public, at least the one who comes to uh, to visit who visit the National Gallery. And this is the portal. Uh, you guys can still check it out. Uh, yeah. So, okay. I'm just not going to be too long. Uh, okay. So, basically, like uh, the it's pretty straightforward. I mean, like the library and archive. How how the library and archive function in National Gallery Singapore is like a, a reference library. Uh, but the archival work somehow really ties in with the uh, with the collection building mm -hmm. of the. Of the museum, which is focusing on Southeast Asian art, so in a way that it has to tie in, or it has to be based on the on how the territorial narrative works. So when we 
so that that's how I uh, what, what I'm trying to share here is like uh, how the archiving work actually like relate to curatorial research and also to acquisition actually. Uh, so we built the collection database uh, and also we do a kind of like an in-house uh, archival digitization uh, projects, which uh, which then so so the 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 digitization the digitized archives then being used for mainly for the curatorial research, but it's it becomes a digital asset of the of the it's like a digital asset collection of the National Gallery itself. Of course, then we have to kind of like build a like some kind of an SOP, you know, like in terms of like copyright or uh, rights for usage, uh, mainly with the with the artists uh, directly or with the artist family uh, or the one who are the custodian of of, uh, of the legacy of the art. So yeah, basically this is like the like the scope of the archive. Uh, so again, it's always based on the the, the tutorial narratives on kind of like the critical narratives is actually like kind of always grow, kind of like evolve uh, in sync with the collection building. Uh, so we collect the uh, really strictly focused Southeast Asian art references, and also then like uh, this one is the artist primary archive. So usually then when we do acquisition of collection. Uh, so we either uh, loan the archive, or if the if the artists or the artist families also have archives, so then we also do or facilitate the archival digitization, and we and then we uh, kind of like acquire the rights of use for the digitized archive. It's called post custodial collection. So we don't um, mostly we don't own the primary archives, especially for Southeast Asian collection, but we kind of like have the rights as a kind of like a custodian of the digital asset. So it's how it works. Uh, so, and it's also involved like the building history as well. And also that then we work on the exhibition history, uh, meaning like the, the, the running exhibition history, the gallery, uh, which is uh, actually like when I joined the gallery, just open, so the exhibition history hasn't been going on very long. So we focus more on the historical archive of the artists. So it's a bit different with, let's say, Singapore Art Museum, who already had twenty years of history, but then it already had quite like a quite some age of uh, exhibition history archives. So this is just like some uh, very like. A, Tip of the iceberg of, of the, the digitization projects uh, with artists from Southeast Asia that we did. Uh, the Purita Kalau the Desma, I, I mean, like, we, we it's very, I, I'm quite emotionally attached with, with the archive. I mean, Sir Patrick uh, is very, also very familiar with it. Like, it's an amazing, amazing archive. Like, uh, so it's, it was really great pleasure uh, working on the Kalau Desma scrapbooks. Uh, so in this context, I think that what I want to share more, I mean, like, I, I don't think that I have much time left, uh, but uh, relating, because I'm not in the National Gallery anymore, so I think that it's more can be something like, how I, it's more about how I see the, how my own actually like individual perspectives on what, what archives should do, or what building archives uh, relate to, you know, like our role as an art historian or as a curator, uh, and especially like in terms of, uh, like in the National Gallery, in terms of collection development. Like, uh, because I mean, like, uh, in terms of Southeast Asian collection uh, or Southeast Asian art history, for example, like this, uh, the, this whole archival work or study, and also the collection building itself is still relatively quite new. And many of the works, uh, I mean, like many of the many of the archives are not like in a in a centralized place, and and it's so like we have to kind of like scavenge it from from artist families, and and so then how and 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 in a way that the whole Southeast Asian uh, the whole narrative itself in terms of archives is sort of quite choppy, and actually like that that's actually like what makes uh, 
uh, uh, I think I think that's the task, and that's kind of like like that's what the task, the, the, the endless task of archival work, especially when we talk Indonesia or Southeast Asia. Uh, especially like in like when I'm when I'm working on the archives, I'm kind of like really uh, in a way that uh, that I kind of my preference really go back to like the birth of modern era, modern modernism or how modernism work, uh, how modern modernism enter Southeast Asia. Uh, so also because then I mean like it's it's they are beautiful archives, right? Like it's a it's a uh, they're, they're nearly one, uh, most of them are like uh, nearly 100 years old and there's always kind of like surprises and, and like new discoveries uh, in the, uh, in trying to, you know, like in, in, in this period. Uh, and it's related so much to, uh, especially like how, how modern art relates to this whole idea of nation, nation, nation building and and uh, and especially like post independence uh, in Indonesia and Southeast Asia. And back to the about the context of the task of the archives, I think that uh, one of the main uh, yeah one of the main tasks is for me is also to bring forth the parts of art history overlooked by existing historical canons and and especially the art market. That relates to to the how collect building, you know, like how uh, that we we uh, that mainly like uh, the one of the I think that one of the biggest challenge is the fact that uh, let alone archives, the more, many of the artworks themselves are already either like lost or damage, uh, and what we can actually rely on are only like, the, uh, you know, like traces of these, these archives, uh, uh, traces from the archives about the existence of these works. Like for example, like here is, this is actually like one of my uh, quest, <laughs> and which is not yet uh, resolved, is to find the uh, Sujoyono uh, children and cat, it was one of his early works in 1938. Uh, it's a uh, it's kind of like his first prominent work, uh, shown at Batavia Kunstspring uh, in the exhibition in the Shibon Collecti, 1938. And it's never uh, it was actually like it was existing, but then it nobody knows where it's where about <laughs> until now. And it was actually like prominently like, featured in the, I think this is a Batavia Shinri's Blood, uh, like a review and actually like under, it's, un, it's placed under the Mark Chagall's uh, painting that was shown at the Renault, I think it's one of the, one of the series of the Renault exhibition that was shown in the Batavia Kunstkring at the same time. Uh, so yeah, so please everyone who come into this, Style of Sujiyono, let me know. Yeah, so all we can see now is basically just, just the archive, and that there was this. Yeah, and also that the actually like the, it was shown. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, there were two 1930s works also shown at the uh, Sujiyono's obituary exhibition and due to fine arts. And this is some Anto Yuliman's review of that of that exhibition. Uh, oh yeah, so it's a posthumous exhibition. Yeah. And uh, the 1937 also pastel and home by the sea 1938. And yeah, there's never been any trace of this whereabout. But it was there in 1986. So yeah, the lost works are mainly like one of my uh, like I think that try to encourage on how archival work can uh, can fill in those blanks in the Southeast Asian canons. And the next one is the historically obscured. And I think this is quite a, quite, quite a task in Southeast Asian narrative. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like it's, I think that we all aware, like, like it, I mean, I mean, when we speak about Southeast Asia, it's a, it's a region with 
well, I mean, like, it's not only pretty history. I mean, I think that I don't need to uh, be remind you of that. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of like there's much black holes in the in the Southeast Asian, especially like also relate to art history. How, how art history uh, reflects these uh, erasures, actually. And uh, like for example, like this one is the uh, archive of the Yinhua Artist Association. Uh, it's an Indonesian Chinese art group, very, very, very active, as we can see from the catalog. Uh, like they, 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 I, they publish like really, really advanced, sophisticated catalogs uh, at that time. Uh, and uh, so like, several exhibitions from I think like from 1952 to 19 early 1960s and it's one of the founders uh Lee Man Pong uh and yeah and actually like they 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 already have this kind of like curated uh this whole like curated introduction and and so no trace of the works and also then because like most of the members were, as we can probably like guess, it's uh, the lots of them are exiled in 1965, uh, and then basically just like the, the association was expanded. And uh, I think this is one by Pa Agus, uh, and Jakarta Post is one of like very few uh, articles that actually like try to revive or try to. Uh, remind people about the existence of this uh, association or this art group. Uh, yeah, I mean, like this one is uh, woodcut by Wen Piao. Uh, I think that it's quite quite striking one. It's very catechol. It's like and yeah. So nobody, yeah, nobody ever like tried to make uh, effort or or knows or yeah. Where the existence of the works now. Maybe some of them already reportedly already like destroyed, but basically just now, like hidden somewhere and just like forgotten in time. And the third one is women in art history. Uh, so if we see through the archives, actually, like there's a lot of women's names as well, in Indonesian context, especially. Yeah. Uh, we have like uh, Liati and uh, 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 Priyoto, for example. Like uh, you, you can actually like see the the presence of, of the Indonesian uh, of Indonesian women works in you know like early let's say modern art uh, from the archives, like modern art activities. Uh, but again, like they they are most of them. Many of them and were never like really placed in the canons. And and speaking of like art market, for example, or, or what is regarded as as like uh, part of the let's say trailblazers of art history. Of course, then we have like Emilia. Uh, I mean, like for probably like all of us here in the. Uh, in the panels, probably already familiar with from Emeria, but uh, uh, I think that the revival of uh, Emeria just started like probably like 10, uh, 10 years ago or something. That that he uh, she was kind of like regarded uh, like a very prominent uh, and influential figure in the especially related to the Persagi uh, with her involvement uh, and. Uh, uh, I, uh, me and the curatorial team, uh, led by Lisa Horikawa uh, in National Gallery of Singapore, uh, kind of like did the special research, archival research, and also a collection research of Emilia. And uh, we are we were quite happy. We we made it to uh, to propose for an acquisition of Emilia. Some push actually and of course then the archives were really helpful to make this push of putting Emeria into the collection uh, so 
the this one, the 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 last one, the man from Papua and he got Seabird. That was the one that uh, yeah managed to be taken as part of the National Gallery collection. Uh -huh. I mean, like in terms of archival, or I mean, like if you're looking from, you know, like archival checkbox, you know, like she checked all the box, you know, like uh, in terms of, uh, like there's so many reviews, and even Sujoyono himself, you know, like really kind of like highlight her in a high regard. So there was no no reason uh, that we shouldn't put Emilia into the canon. I mean, like it's so it's it's one of the tasks of I think that is one of the tasks of the archive. And it never ends. And I think that there are so many other uh, undiscovered. Uh, yeah, so for uh, unresolved task and that the art, either the archive can help resolve or add to another uh, another homework. But I think that, yeah, that, I think that's what I can share from my end. Sorry, oh, yeah, anyway. And uh, all my all my examples are Indonesian uh, cases, but I also have uh, uh, other. Uh, we have lots of other cases in in Southeast Asian context. Just that, um, in terms of copyright, I think that I just kind of like showed the Indonesian ones. So that's from my end, and I hope to for more fruitful conversations in the Q and A, and I hand over to the, our next presenters. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mbak Wawa, uh, Mbak Farah, and uh, we can continue with uh, uh, Sir Patrick uh, Flores. Uh, Sir Patrick, the screen is yours. Thank you, Asep, and uh, thank you to uh, Museum, Museum Machan for the invitation. It's my honor to be here and to be with friends, uh, Farah, Nuning, Simon, and of course, Asep. Thank you also to Renjana for the uh, uh, seamless coordination. Um, I'd like to share my screen now. Uh, when, when I learned that ASEP curated, uh, curated an exhibition on everyday narrative, I thought of the Spanish word uh, relacion, uh, which has different meanings uh, layered around it. Uh, relation can be story, narrative. It can also be relationship, relation, kinship, and uh, relation in the uh, history of conquest of the Philippines by Spain uh, pertain to chronicle or catalog uh, of the things that the uh, the Spanish saw when they first came to. To, to the Philippines. So I'm interested in this idea of relacion, which uh, talks about these three uh, categories of story, kinship, and archive. And uh, uh, I think the notion of archive was uh, very well explicated by, uh, by Farah earlier. So I'm happy that the, it, it was uh, uh, brought up at, at the outset. And in relation to the word relacion and uh, how, how the three categories come together, I'm reminded of the work of the Martinique uh, philosopher, uh, Edouard Glissant, who talked about the poetics of relation. So the idea of the poetics of relation, I think uh, bring, uh, brings together story, kinship and archive. When uh, as uh, Glissant uh, talks of a new imaginary, meaning a new poetics, no? a new imaginary of being with others or relation. Uh, so the, the idea of the imaginary and the idea of togetherness come together in, in the word relacion. So uh, I talk about relacion in, 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 in the context of my work at the Bangkok Art Biennale in 2018. Uh, Apinan Poshonand, Poshonand uh, uh, the director of the Biennale invited me to be one of the curators for the first uh, Bangkok Art Biennale, uh, which he themed uh, Beyond Bliss. It was a broad theme and uh, I struggled a bit how to, to approach that theme. Um, 
uh, Apinan uh, gave us uh, freedom to interpret what what these words mean. So I I thought of uh, Apinan thought of, of bliss as some kind of an exceptional a condition of exceptional content contentment. I I I I would hear from him uh, the idea of, of nirvana or even paradise, uh, which uh, uh, something that sometimes is assigned to, to, to Thailand as, as, a, as a place. So I was also intrigued by the word beyond. So I thought it was, uh, it could elude, but it could also exceed uh, this notion of bliss and uh, this uh, idea of eluding and exceeding uh, uh, is also present in the in the in the thought of Glissant, who thought of poetics as uh, something outside and also within. That's why he thought that uh, poetics was dangerous, uh, but also ineffective. So uh, I I'm interested in that uh, in the vulnerability of of, of the poetic, uh, the imaginary, in relation to the desire to be with with others. So I uh, thought of uh, two, uh, I thought of focusing on the child and the primitive in my selection of the artists. I, I asked Apinan to give me a space. I didn't want to be part of a large space in, in the Biennale. So I, 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 I chose a space an interesting space, an old department store near the Chopraya River, near the uh, famous Mandarin Oriental Hotel and uh, um, the Assumption Church. No? It's OP Place, a shopping plaza that sells antiquities, textile, and uh, uh, Thailand uh, cultural artifacts. It's an uh, art deco building, and uh, I was uh, drawn to the to the to the space, I, I like this notion of the arcade of sorts, uh, and this was uh, built in 1908. Also, like the the history of, of the building. So uh, uh, to to curate, uh, so I I, fo I focused on the child and the primitive as uh, as uh, tropes in uh, selecting the works for uh, for. For the exhibition I did for OP Place, and this has something to do with everyday narratives, as as we as I explain, as I explain later. It's, it's also interesting that Farah, uh, in uh, talking about Emilia, uh, discussed the idea of the child and the primitive. Now this uh, primitive uh, feel of the work, and also the prominence of the child as as a subject. I thought that the child and the primitive. Uh, prone to fantasy, prone to fantasy or methods of uh, fantasizing, uh, whether by intuition or by representation through uh, the exotic, for instance. Uh, and this uh, is quite salient in, in you know, thinking about, about Thailand. So uh, I assembled uh, some artists uh, from Southeast Asia and beyond. Uh, uh, to include art labor who who uh, presented the work uh, Jirai Ju, a radical room, is a think tank room according to uh, art labor from Vietnam, a think tank room and a mind map. Uh, the phrase uh, Jirai Ju uh, speaks of the belief in uh, the human and the cosmos of the ethnic uh, of the ethnic community, uh, Jarai, which is Austronesian in origin, based in the central highlands of Vietnam. As Art Labor explains, and I, I'd like to quote them, in Jarai philosophy, being human is part of the metamorphosis, uh, meta metamorphosis cycle of nature. After that, the journey go going back to their origin ends at becoming Jew. Uh, evaporating to the environment. I also like this, uh, this space in OP Place because it is porous. It, uh, it is connected to, to like a temple uh, just across, just a, uh, a Buddhist temple just across the building. 
or the state of non-being, the beginning particles of new existence. In this uh, metaphorical context, um, uh, for forest land with its people is the vanishing you, while new existence of modernization and industri industrialization arise, according to uh, the art label. The Radical Room encompasses three years' worth of work with the community of the Central Highlands uh, of Vietnam and includes archival materials, uh, documentation, uh, and text collected from previous projects within the scope. So the archival is embedded in the ethnographic, which uh, you know, complicates the idea of the, of the consciousness of the everyday. I also... Uh, included the work of uh, the pioneer Indonesian artist activist Moliono, uh, uh, who paints hauntingly beautiful portraits of school children in Papua. They are rendered in an extremely realist style that they uncannily resemble photography. Uh, uh, these images exude innocence, uh, dignity, conjuring the fantasy of, of paradise. The paintings, however, come with uh, uh, teaching modules, and you can see them under this painting. I mean, yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll show some of them. So with teaching modules uh, of art that the artist prepared for the students in a project he initiated for the schools of Papua. So this, uh, these are the modules that he prepared. These modules refer to activities that ask the students to draw figures from their environment. This alternation between portrait and the initial experience of drawing uh, points to the, for me, points to the agency of being present and also making present. So this is a module that uh, Maliono prepared. And this is the uh, example of uh, how the students would interpret uh, the module using, using materials. Uh, from, from the environment, there are several of these uh, modules and uh, uh, yeah, so this is an example. The third artist is Samak Kosen, uh, from, who is an anthropologist uh, by training and has recently uh, extended his practice to contemporary art. I'm struck by uh, Samak Kosen's notion of um, non-human ethnography which is a series of visual ethnography based on field research at the uh, southernmost provinces of Thailand by focusing on queer ties of human and non-human agencies in the realms of uh, Anthropocene space spaces, according to him. This non-human ethnography of sheep, uh, I think this sheep, yeah, and waves, non-human, the wave and the sheep, no? Uh, is uh, conceptualized with the idea of art and anthropological methods to explore the representation of coexistence among people, things, and places. So the works consist of multimedia images, uh, videos, photographs, uh, writing, drawing, and objects. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a collection of plastic from the sea. Uh, the videos focus on ship and waves. The other part of the installation consists of field notes, field notes uh, in Milayu language. Another segment is the festival of sacrifice and the objects of wool from a stray, from stray sheep. No? So uh, I find this practice uh, very interesting. Uh, the, uh, the third artist is Isa Hoxon from the Philippines. In, in Isa Hoxon's uh, Becoming White, the artist choreographs happiness. He, she was, she's interested in happiness, the idea of happiness as migrant affective labor. Uh, Hobson looks at the performance of happiness as labor by constructing the figure of the distant princess Snow White. The work involves performance, archival materials, video and sound installation, interrogating the system of desire formation within the global Disney entertainment uh, empire. This choreography finds resonance in the migrant effective labor of Filipino workers in Hong Kong, uh, which is inscribed within relations of race and global spectacle, uh, Filipino entertainers in Hong Kong Disneyland. So uh, Aisa explains in Disneyland Hong Kong, 
a legion of dancers from the Philippines are employed as professional entertainers to repeat formatted performances of happiness as their daily labor, excluded from the main roles that are reserved for specific racial profiles, they are assigned anonymous supporting roles that are uh, such as a zebra in Lion King or a coral in The Little Mermaid or a monkey in Tarzan. So this is, I think this relates well with how, um, how Samak no? uh, uh, reflects on the non-human. So central to Isa's project is the labor of happiness as embodied by the Disney princess, uh, Snow White how the figure uh, of the princess is assembled by way of habituations uh, of happiness and choreographies of domestic labor and how these are inflected by colonial and gendered uh, regimes of bodily performance. For this iteration of becoming white, uh, Hoxon mimics Snow White's actions and gestures. Here the body of the princess and her promise of a happily ever after are made to intersect with that of the domestic workers and the anticipation of a good life via an ethical body that performs the labor of happiness. So the, the drawings are drawings of, of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of Snow White, uh, which, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, which were the uh, copies of which were, uh, were given to, uh, were for our, the audience was asked to pick up some pieces of, of these drawings for them to uh, intervene upon. Uh, so I constellated these uh, four artists from Southeast Asia with uh, artists from Samoa, a trans woman artist, Yuki Kihara, uh, in whose work, uh, Taolaga, The Last Dance is a performance and video work. It is a response to the photographic archive of the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa, Tongarewa, which comprises photographs of Samoa during the colonial administration of New Zealand from 1914 to 1962. In this work, uh, the Taulaga is a Samoan dance performed to both affirm Samoan resilience and lament the losses encountered in its colonial history. In Kihara's performance, the Taulaga, Taba Luga, sorry, is uh, mobilized as a way of confronting colonial history referencing the Mao movement in 1908 that inspired Western Samoa's assertion of its independence from New Zealand's colonialism. In Kihara's performance, she puts on a Victorian mourning dress, which in, in the 1900s was introduced by the German colonial administrators to Samoan sartorial culture. Invocation is a, a single channel video work that speaks to Leo Lotto Faga, and an ancestral ceremony that continues to be practiced today involving the exhumation of the bones of the deceased, cleaning and caring for this as a gesture of reconnecting with the ancestors. It performs an invocation of ancestral presence in the present. Finally, I, I worked with, uh, so these are the two works in, in the room in Opie Place. Opie Place, uh, incidentally, used to be a discotheque. In, uh, in that building. That is according to Apinan who told me that he used to dance here uh, when he was of course younger. So I worked with uh, Joscha Steffens uh, from Germany whose uh, work Teen Spirit Island uh, takes its title from a pediatric psychiatric institute in Hanover in Germany which specializes in the treatment of various kinds of addiction that afflict the youth including video game addiction. So between 2012 and 2015, he followed the lives of 10 professional online gamers who played League of Legends, a multiplayer online battle arena with the largest number of users in the world in a global competitive scale. So aged 17 to 23, these gamers have their own cult following and a fan culture. The other work from Yosha uh, was uh, Okronia, which fabricates a fictitious community of Nazis that lives on a sequestered island in Germany. In Stefan's milieu, the community thrives in a world that never accepted the end of World War II and in which people have continued to work under the SS, uh, the Schutzstaffel, and as Wehrmacht soldiers of the German Reich. 
uh, a time machine in the foreground fleshes out this fiction. Uh, in the original work, which I saw in Amsterdam and the Rijks Academy, this was a, a giant time machine, but uh, we couldn't afford that. So I thought of the Ben Jarong uh, vessel in Thailand as a reference to, 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 uh, re to, modify, to modify the time machine in, um, in Bangkok. And the Joshua was happy about that. So uh, a time machine flashes out this fiction, further entrenching the spectators into a narrative of, of an alternate fascist future uh, that speaks to the recent rise of a far-right political discourse in Germany. So this was the constellation of the works I, I presented for Beyond Bliss, uh, focusing on the, uh, uh, on the child and the primitive and in relation to uh, the ethnic, the exotic, and the non-human with uh, references to the ethnographic archival uh, impulse and also to this idea of the fringe culture in, in Germany, the far right, and also the trans on the other hand. So you have the fringe on the one hand and you have the trans on the other embodied by Yuki Kihara uh, who reflected on, on, on the colonial legacy. And finally, as a way to, uh, you know, to, to, to address the, the milieu and to be with others, I mean, to fulfill the promise of relations, uh, SAMAC uh, organized with the Tamasat University an activity called the Harun Commons. The, there is a mosque in, near OP place and uh, uh, SAMAC thought that it would be uh, productive to engage with the with the uh, community as part of the, the Biennale. So we had some uh, a kind of uh, e cooking and eating session with the Imam who is seen here uh, talking about the mosque and the history of the mosque uh, uh, with also with Kong Ritdi, the, the writer who, who, who considers this his community as well. So we listened to, to stories and to the ecology of relations in the mosque. And of course, we ate. Yeah, so we, the, the people cooked for us and we had a grand time uh, enjoying the food. So you see Milati, Adeltan, Chen, and uh, other friends. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Patrick, for the presentation. We can continue uh, on the q and session with the discussion. And now um, I pass the screen to Simon. Hello. Screen on. OK, perfect. Uh, so uh, Assalamu alaikum and some conjecture to everyone. I would like to acknowledge the Orang Orang Asli Asa Laos, who are the traditional custodians of the lands and seas that we meet on today. I would like to pay my respects to elders past and present while also acknowledging the Orang Orang Asli Asa and Lao joining us today. So I'm really, really happy to see all my friends again and to be in conversation with all of you. So thank you, Asa, Kajan, uh, Rinjana, uh, and Machan for this opportunity. Uh, I guess in deciding what we could individually bring to the conversation, I wrote to Asif yesterday suggesting that maybe I don't really actually have a specific research project that I want to privilege in my presentation. Instead, in response to the title of the exhibition under which we are meeting as panelists today, uh, I would like to focus on perhaps the way and also the place where I try to tell some of these stories about art and also to deliver uh, its sort of like spellbinding promise for some kind of emancipation through the sense perception, right? Uh, so if Patrick has shown the exhibition as a medium and fraught format uh, through which he prospects these potentials and that Farah has shown as the labor of uh, building archives that in turn sort of like uh, allow for the possibility of new kinds of research to emerge or new questions to emerge. I guess I turn to uh, where I'm most familiar with, the university classroom, uh, specifically an art history classroom environment where I've been wrestling with a particular form of narration. 
So those of us who have taken art history would be no stranger to what is called a survey course. It is normally offered as an entry level introduction. It is sweeping in character. In painting the feel of art history as a grand vista, it convinces not so much through rhetorical persuasion, rather it prospects the world of things through rasa, stimulating our sense perception, teasing the students of art history with a horizon of possibility as semester long story glides effortlessly across objects and forms that signal a multitude of dimensions and things and often it holds out. So the singular promise that there's so much more to the materiality of the thing or the make, which constitutes the object of our inquiry, right? Uh, and there is nothing as beguiling or as or, or, or grandois uh, in art history as the telling of this grand narrative. Equally, there's nothing as frustrating as well. And as a form, the survey course promises so much yet often falls short in its delivery. Uh, so for those of us who ultimately fell in love with art though, uh, many of us were, however, unfortunately, were once often, very likely once victim of the survey's cost magical capacity to enchant on some level. And in the past few years, having transitioned from student to teacher, I've also been trying to tell a story about this part of the world that we like to call Southeast Asia. More significantly, since the pandemic a year ago, many of us who are teachers are compelled to migrate the site of teaching and learning into the digital sphere. In both instances, I've relied on the kindness of many strangers in the transitions that I had to make as I orientated myself around new educational environments. In turn, I've also been thinking about how to amplify this generosity and uh, a lot of it my energy is directed in trying to think of what kind of public resources that I'm able to build uh, to make teaching and learning of Southeast Asian art more uh, accessible and open, uh, at least as much as possible before the next Ivy League uh, university comes up with some grand idea to monetize education in the MOOC online uh, course system that every other university, even public ones, then have to sort of fall in line or else perish in both the ranking or corporate identity or income game, right? Uh, so here, I, I like to really sort of like uh, acknowledge uh, the contribution of the current batch of students who are enrolled in the course. Uh, and uh, sharing this open access uh, syllabus is only possible because fee paying students uh, actually chose to enroll in this course in the public universities. And public universities, I think, are very important sort of social institutions that create educational opportunities for the wider society. And they ensure the access and affordability in the study of humanities uh, that takes time uh, to explore complex questions uh, rather than the more utilitarian sort of like dimensions of uh, in how we understand human society and culture. So what I'm sharing, uh, what I want to share here is a link to uh, this course that I'm uh, I've been teaching this semester and uh, feel free to, okay, it's in the chat box. So feel free to sort of uh, wander around uh, the website since I know that many of you are probably, you probably have another window open and you're probably browsing some other things as well. So uh, if you need some distraction, this is a good place to sort of like go and feel free to browse as I, you know, continue my reflection on this endeavor. Okay, so the course, Art and Architecture of Southeast Asia came together uh, really not unlike, uh, I like to think of it that it's not unlike the Seka Gaja, uh, Jagat or the flower of the world uh, in Sabatik Muti. And it is so, I think it is, so, uh, it is also a beautiful metaphor for how it's the only way that we should really think about the world. Uh, its most beautiful dimension is ultimately uh, in the form of a kind of pet patchwork at best. It's not a plane of infinite extendability where the all over motif then sort of like consumes and replicates itself over and over and over and over again. Rather, it is like a garden where the whole, the whole picture emerges out of, uh, to borrow a term from linguistic, uh, agglutinate, a form of agglutination, right? So imagine the telling of a history of art and architecture in Southeast Asia as a Seka Jagat. Uh, is therefore also to approximate the archipelagic on sensible ter terms 
uh, that the story we tell can only be in the form of collage, that it can only be patchwork at best, not singular, not unifying, not whole. Uh, so rather than emphasizing on the cultural integrity or the exceptionalism of the region, uh, the learning cohort uh, journeys together with me this semester to consider Southeast Asia as an intersecting node that belongs to many overlapping cultural orbits. Uh, and this region was at different periods in time and through different cultural communities connected to different parts of the world, Austronesian seafaring culture, Sanskrit smartness, monsoon or Islamic paper state qualities, inland, you know, or, and literal forms of like uh, Nanyang republics, uh, anti-status sort of like communities across land, sea, mountains, uh, you know, larger sort of like uh, uh, trading networks across the Indian Ocean, uh, Christianity that's Indo-Pacific at, uh, at heart and uh, at, at its center, as well as the various kinds of like European ambitions and enterprises that visited this part of the world. Uh, so besides explaining these sort of like contexts and, and the underlying worldviews, uh, I guess the thematic inquiry then really sort of like draws the learning cohort into thinking about questions of power, gender, memory, but uh, also more importantly, uh, uh, questions of sort of like translation. Uh, what are the sort of like uh, principles of, uh, what are the adaptive principles that inform cultural encounters uh, is what we are interested in asking. So it is hoped that this might help us to understand the relationship between art, architecture and cultural practice to contextual ideas, including concepts of sovereignty and and ceremonial power, material technology, and knowledge infrastructure, but also forms of historical consciousness uh, alongside spatial language and knowledge. Uh, so by developing a more nuanced account of the region's plastic expressions, uh, I think what we're trying to do is move together towards uh, something that is more prospective, hoping to gradually discover perhaps new theories of visuality and aesthetics. And uh, a chief part of the course is that we try to frame art history as a kind of Creole history. So focusing instead on the multitude of cultural encounters over a long span of time that explores ad adaptive powers of artistic form to account for how culture emerges really through interactions and meetings of people from different backgrounds, rather than adopt the essentialist view that culture is, is something that's intrinsic. This approach emphasizes, therefore, translation in the making of any culture. Uh, so if in teaching the survey course, I'm trying to work through a paradox, right? It might initially appear that, the, that as a narrative model, uh, the, the, the survey course is really quite antithetical to the small narratives. Uh, and, uh, but the challenge, I think, for me is to smuggle that kind of enchantment uh, and that kind of like sustained concentration of committing 14 weeks to an exploration of knowledge so that we can perhaps dwell a little longer uh, uh, across the diff and glide across the different kinds of like patchwork of vision and ideas in the hope that they might offer uh, a, a way of seeing the world as an archipelago, which as Patrick has intimated, is more than just a geography or a region. It is the search for a politics of relations of how we relate to one another. You might say that teaching Southeast Asian art through these expanded scopes is overly ambitious and perhaps uh, the, 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 the content is overwhelming. Uh, but you know, I can only answer that I cannot imagine a history of this part of the world that isn't so. So given such circumstances, I think what is only left for me to do is to learn how to tell this story more convincingly more powerfully and hopefully more persuasively. And even if I'm nowhere close to succeeding, I think each year offers me a chance to move towards that goal closer. Thank you. Terima kasih, Simon. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, now, before we uh, go to the uh, discussion session, uh, we will have a last presentation from Banuni. So, um, Banuni. The screen is yours. Um, Banuning, uh, you are still muted. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. 
Uh, thank you, Asep and Renjana and Museum Macan for organizing uh, this event. I feel like uh, as a last speaker, I need to reiterate again appreciation and also thank you uh, for inviting me to contribute to this panel discussion. Um, I'm honored to be here uh, alongside my critical friends that I have known for a long time, uh, Patrick, Farah, and, and Simon, and also uh, the discussion points that uh, offered by uh, Machan, I think is very uh, important because uh, it's the call to problematize what is actually at stake to make an artwork. And how would we talk about art when the globalized and formalized institutions govern the ways for thinking about and, and doing art? And how many words do we want to present when discuss about art? So that's my presentation. The title of my presentation is, uh, is Renjana and Asep going to share my, uh, yes, uh, the title of my presentation is Methods for Approaching Art in an Age of Anxiety. Uh, I titled this presentation following uh, the way scholar Michael Talsik uh, titled his book uh, that I really love. I swear I saw this drawings uh, in fieldwork notebooks, namely my own. During my uh, postdoctoral fellowship here at the University of Amsterdam, I'm working on uh, these two research projects. Maybe if you can show my next slide. Uh, one is doing Commons Museum through radical pedagogies and ecological archivist thinking. And second one is figures of artists, intellectual activists in contemporary Indonesia, remaking village sovereignty. So they are still ongoing projects. So my presentation here is not about like the clean and end product of the research, rather I'm going to tell a story uh, of how I've become this kind of researcher with this kind of uh, research about art. Um, what kinds of alternative genealogies of Indonesian contemporary art that I intend to contribute through my works. Uh, first, um, the alternative genealogy I think uh, is about, uh, I think to address Machan's invitation, I feel that I need to interrogate my own position as an intellectual that partly nurtured by the new order style of education institutions and the kinds of knowledge that I want to produce. I always question that. Uh, that's also in line with uh, Simon's presentation earlier. It's an, an attempt to interrogate a fraction of my historical researcher self. My work is always situated in the intersection between uh, the knowledge production uh, designed by the academic world, which is in itself is of, often violent and self-organizing cultural organization outside that uh, education institutions. And in this presentation, I want to think about the discussion points, really think about the discussion points uh, by Machan through the keywords of my research and situated it within scholarly trends and political contexts. I think uh, it is very important for me as a researcher, Indonesian researcher, focusing on Indonesia and Southeast Asia to really question that and assume a certain uh, position. I need to take a position, uh, if I may, to uh, follow Tim Ingold here, uh, not just as observer, but participant, but I would also add an observer, participant, and also more. It has to be much more. Uh, my existence as a researcher and the subjects of my research is always mutually shaped by, uh, by our surroundings. And so research becomes, um, try, so now I, it becomes makes sense to me that research uh, becomes part of my way of saying something to uh, what is happening in the social and political scene. So in a way, my presentation can also uh, be read as something that 
uh, will provide insights maybe into the rise of critics, uh, art researchers, and the making of uh, intellectual infrastructure in Indonesia. And I want to, uh, with that, I want to echo the question that is also always posed to me. What does it mean to present the works of the people that I research as art? And what kind of agency does this uh, enable and or disable? Uh, maybe if you can go to my next slide. Uh, in all of my research, self-organizing and institutionalization of cultural production are always strong elements. And uh, in my previous uh, PhD research, I conceptualized the idea that artists, intellectuals, and cultural activists create alternative spaces as a means to counter lack in art infrastructure, create networks, and fulfill their visionary ideas. So all the people in my research inhabit this kind of visionary uh, spaces. As my research is developing, the conceptualization of uh, alternative spaces is also evolve. They emerge as a, like a safe space, uh, even though we can discuss more about that to nurture a sense of disobedience and critical thoughts in the times of uncertainty. And secondly, I would like to uh, point your direction to the friction and contested zone in my, in my slide. Uh, what kind of perspective that I should employ to capture the areas where reflection, imagining, and thinking about precariousness and future take place? What kinds of uh, friction in Anna Singh's world that I need to consider to be able to produce uh, the knowledge of anxieties emerge from the intersection between art, social activism, and radical pedagogies? So in my slide there, the friction appeared as the contested zone, and that's the area of my research, uh, something which doesn't only capture uh, the contingent encounters between what's happening between uh, the global art scene, you know, like this is the oil which makes the machine of the art world is going, but it's also uh, something that is uh, continuously uh, function uh, through the tensions and conflict with the with lots of different kind of institutions uh, developed by the state and other authorities operating uh, in Indonesia and also the surrounding. So lots of my thinking uh, goes to reflect on uh, institutionalization uh, and also what kinds of imagination that is uh, afforded if I'm seeing art that way. And so the practices of the people that I research reflect worlding practices in which uh, they reset their lives to allow uh, rooms for plurifers. I won't follow Arturo Escobar attuning uh, to the different realities of development. So it shows an attempt to remake their lives, making a more uh, conducive and workable living arrangement. And I also want to uh, draw uh, something I pick up some keywords from uh, Patrick and Simon Soon's, uh, Simon's presentation earlier about something about uh, interlinking and uh, glutination. Yeah. And uh, so for instance, my, 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 my book, uh, The Doing Commons Museum Through Radical Pedagogies and Ecological Archivist Thinking, it derives from my uh, interest in archiving practices that emerge from uh, what I conceptualize as commons people. So those who concerns uh, the making of various arts and cultural projects and putting forward uh, certain questions, uh, visions and plan. And they, so I'm interested in this kind of figures. They play an important role in producing uh, keywords uh, that help to illuminate the question at stake in Indonesia today. Uh, the works from Joshua Parker and other writers as well. And they are the engineers. I follow Rudolf Mrazek of their dreams, visions, and, and plan. And in developing this uh, project, I'm also uh, always influenced by my own involvement in uh, Kunchi's long-term uh, practice, School of Improper Education, 
where we pay attention to the non-productive uh, or capitalism aspect of learning. So this chapbook is about that altogether, about alternative spaces which work to develop radical visions of community-based living strategies through practicing radical pedagogies and ecological archivist thinking. I study about uh, independent initiatives which sit at the confluence of doing museums, archiving communities and alternative pedagogies. And I try not, and I attempt to uh, conceptualize these spaces as commons museum, which means they activate uh, their spaces as public platforms to apply a connectedness with local histories and to learn about social environment. So I use the angle of decolonized pedagogies and contextual education uh, as the angle. And in that, it allows me to examine the meaning of uh, sustainability uh, that is rooted in the values of justice, solidarity, care, and uh, concise relation with their closest environment. And another thing that I want to present here is about uh, the arts and figure that I present in my research. I see art less as an individual creative expression and objects to circulate within a uh, global art market in Biennale apparatuses. I think in the context of post-authoritarian Indonesia, it is important to observe art which functions uh, more as part of a community endeavor to develop creative strategies for future uh, sustainability. I still want to use that word and remaking their lives. So my work discusses uh, visions and plans uh, of these people around common social designs, uh, field of agencies and areas of caring. Their practices uh, sometimes can move in and out of the usual uh, established art institutions, but oftentimes their works are often regarded as non-art as well. But at the same time, they nurture uh, spaces for doing art. So art is both a creative expression and a structure for developing methods to engage with the people. And the people in my research play roles, um, uh, different roles at the same time, cultural enablers, uh, cultural workers, facilitators, educators, archivists, and collaborators. They sometimes escape the framing of contemporary art straight jackets as well, due to the impression that uh, they are deemed to be too socially engaged or vernacular or traditional. And sometimes they don't also try to negotiate their entrance into the global art scene. But I see that they maximize their situated outsiderness to produce the performance uh, of art and spaces that defies this uh, representational stage of culture. So that's my um, the kind of arguments that I'm trying to uh, develop in my research. Uh, they work blur the boundaries between uh, contemporary art and community uh, empowerment project. The art making project is situated in, in between the building of uh, there's indigenous pride, uh, and communities pride and the shaping of local communities from the inside as well as from the outside. And I see that uh, they complicate the relationship between performing tradition, there's a craft making, cultural heritage, memorious knowledge and uh, ecotourism. And if I take that perspective, I can explore the relational position of art within the dynamic process to reimagine the relation between people, social environment, and the state, because they provide a critical response to the religious and political conflicts. And my research as well, uh, it's really clear that uh, by organizing their spaces, they counteract the new order style of education, which was uh, designed to repress and exclude local knowledge and, and uh, indigenous communities and the state's neoliberal approach to development. 
uh, as a way to uh, to close my presentation, uh, what kind of imaginal work or work of the political imagination does the practices in my uh, in the people in my research do? Uh, in my research, art appears as something which emerge from the entanglement between uh, the urgencies for doing something and posing the questions today. And practicing art uh, in my research is an act through which they establish a practical or embodied vessels through which they can seek connections uh, with the ancestors' knowledge. And doing art through archiving practices in a lots of uh, what the people in my research are doing propel the work of political imaginations. Uh, and the kinds of political imaginations that I observe so far is uh, developing innovative ways for asking uh, direct questions and posing demands towards the grand design of national education and then planning community-based living strategies uh, with community members and designing a contextual education platform which connects directly to the everyday life and creating learning spaces dedicated to develop connection uh, with local histories. Thank you. Terima kasih, Mbak Nuning. Uh, thank you, Mbak Nuning, for the presentation. Um, now it's time to have a discussion and uh, I still cannot see any question from the audience. So I will start uh, by also uh, again discuss what, what we've been uh, listening from the uh, speaker or panelists. Um, is Bawai here already? Or maybe she's still out. Uh, I would start with Simon and uh, Sir Patrick. Uh, I think it's... Uh, I'm intrigued by the discussion. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, related to uh, Mr. Patrick's presentation around uh, Edward Grissang thinking that you mentioned in the presentation. Um, somehow it reminds me, uh, not somehow, but it reminds me of, of, of his idea of uh, archipelagic uh, thinking as opposed to the continent, uh, continental thinking uh, in regard to the Caribbean context, of course, in, in, in his context. Uh, it is also something that uh, I've been thinking in related to context of Southeast Asia as a archipelago, uh, and uh, it's beyond uh, one only only one national state. Um, maybe for uh, to uh, and and also Simon also uh, mentioned about this uh, uh, archipelagic thinking as well, not in the not in the. Uh, direct way to the to the Glissan, uh, thinking. Maybe for for Patrick, I would like to ask: Is this idea of archipelagic thinking also something that you discuss between the curatorial or artistic team in the Bangkok Art Biennale, specifically? Sorry, I said what was the the question? How so? It, uh, it, is is this idea of arc archipelagic thinking uh, that coined by Glissang also uh, part of your discussion in the in the curatorial uh, or artistic team of the Biennale, Bangkok Art Biennale. Mm. Well, maybe not so specifically for, for Bangkok, uh, but generally I think as part of my uh, practice as a curator, I, I I am inspired by that kind of uh, uh, like a dispersive thinking, something that uh, uh, is like a kind of redistribution of uh, energies across across places. Yeah, uh, that is uh, quite central to my curatorial practice. But for 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 Bangkok, it was. Uh, uh, the Biennale had a ready-made theme, so I couldn't do anything about it. So I was responding to it uh, in the best way I could, given the circumstances of the, the curatorial thinking. Uh, so in, as, as, as a response to, to that, I 
I, I thought of, as I mentioned in the presentation, I thought of these tropes of the child and the primitive, uh, which might, which might uh, relate back to the archipelagic, no? in the sense of the idea of the paradise or the, the exotic, the fantasy of uh, maybe uh, uh, purity. Yeah, but uh, only at a certain level, only at a certain level, because the, the works that I, I included also complicated this, uh, these ideas, yeah. Thank you, uh, Sir Patrick. And uh, to Simon, uh, you mentioned about the translation, right? In the in the in 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 your presentation, it's about question of power, gender, memory, and uh, you say translation. So I wonder uh, if you could uh, share a little bit uh, more detail on the process, maybe the challenges, because I guess or I suppose that the translation it's not on it's not uh, only means that you translate uh, one language to each other, but also as a process of, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, research as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I use the word translation uh, on both sort of like the literal sense as well as the metaphorical sense to also uh, to also suggest the translation of concepts, right? That, that, that this sort of what principles that perhaps underlie any attempt to uh, absorb what is considered external to oneself and fashion it into something on one's own term. Uh, uh, but uh, in, in response, I guess, to how it might help us to think about the archipelag group productively, maybe I, I try not to fall back on, uh, uh, on the determinism of geography. Uh, 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 in thinking about the archipelagic, so I rather think of the archipelago. It's not a natural thing, it's not it's, it's essential to Southeast Asia. It's not because we live in the New Santara and that's why we're archipelagic. Uh, uh, but if we were to sort of like think of this along what you have proposed, uh, this is a kind of like fiction. It's, it's sustained through the small stories that we continue to tell, then uh, it only exists if we continue and choose to tell all these stories and to tell all these stories coming from, arising from so many different parts of Southeast Asia, some kind of translation needs to happen. Uh, that's how I see it. Okay, uh, thank you, Simon. Uh, now I, uh, we have question, but before that, I would like to back to Mbak Nuning yeah, uh, and maybe uh, Mbak Farah, uh, welcome back, Mbak Farah. <laughs> uh, to Mbak Nuning, uh, there's a is it, there's there's a connection, of course, with uh, between the presentation from Mbak Nuning and also uh, Simon, and at some point also with uh, Patrick, uh, it relates to the to the critical pedagogy, and uh, as uh, Patrick also share. Uh, he also mentioned uh, the work of Muliono, and I think it was in our early discussion. And um, um, but but you did not present the the picture, yeah, uh, uh, Muliono's uh, picture, <laughs> as as uh, yeah, as we saw yesterday. But uh, anyway, I mean, uh, my question is that uh, um, is that also related to to what uh, Muliono's uh, practice? Uh, on how he he see the the critical pedagogy that relate to the uh, mostly pedagogy of the oppressed in in Pak Mulyono's uh, uh, inspired inspiration from Freire. Uh, is that something that you also uh, have it as a as a background or uh, as a theoretical uh, background in in the in your research as well? Because you you you, you relate the pedagogy uh, to the power to the uh, especially in context of new order, right? I'm uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, part of uh, the analysis of my research is to uh, to capture the making of this uh, new breed of uh, if I can say that. Uh, uh, artist, but also uh, function as intellectual and activist at the same time, and there's a lot of 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 that is about uh, 
what factors or what practices, uh, what activities that uh, shape the, uh, their intellectual uh, progressive thinking. And I, in my research, I there is a uh, lots of interesting connections between uh, the. This, it has to do with translation as as well. Uh, intellectual transfer, yeah, knowledge transfer, uh, or theoretical transfer uh, that shape uh, the way. Uh, the people in my research uh, think about uh, education. So for instance, uh, Paulo Freire is always uh, cited as uh, one of the influential figure that uh, shaped their way of thinking about uh, education. And that's not uh, surprising because uh, Paulo Freire is also a very important uh, reading uh, not only in Indonesia, but also in other uh, contexts, uh, which experience um, political uh, and creative thoughts, uh, uh, repressions. And, uh, and, and in my research, I'm interested not only in uh, portraying how these people are influenced by this kind of thinkers, but also how uh, the translation of Paulo Freire, for instance, and other uh, thinkers as well. Uh, I, I live uh, my, throughout the 90s and uh, reading all of this uh, Freire and uh, Gramsci and etc. And now I'm thinking what kind of uh, productive entanglements that are, uh, uh, resulted from from that, and I can say that uh, it, I can say that uh, it actually uh, make them thinking about uh, their environment, but but also serve as a catalyst to uh, to produce um, uh, an alternative spaces uh, to help leveraging their their ideas. Uh, so they, it helps them uh, formulating their visions and then uh, they're creating the spaces to, uh, you know, uh, to action. So I'm not sure if I answer your questions, but uh, I think uh, that's, I think it's very important in my research about uh, figures of uh, artists and intellectual and activists to uh, directly address this um, intellectual uh, encounters. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's that's also explain uh, also how uh, Freire uh, described about this uh, cultural action as well. Uh, it's not uh, it's intellectual uh, creator as well as artist as well in, uh, includes. And um, we have quite some question here in the um, Q and A uh, chat. I will let Bafara answer the first question. This is for you, Bafara. Uh, can you open the Q&A box from Tan Siuli? Have you found it, Bafara? Uh, you, you are still muted. But... Hello? Okay. Hi, Siuli. Yes, thanks so much. OK, sorry, I just checked the Q&A box. I always look at the chat. <laughs> but it's going to use it you do. What are your thoughts on how this might play out at Archive Lash linked to state sponsored institute? Uh, okay, good question. I mean, like, I think that, uh, well, I think that uh, in my presentation, Katie is based on uh, my own experience in working in a state sponsored institution, <laughs> like National Gallery Singapore. I think that the, it we well, the one thing, uh, I think that in a way that we are, what we try to build is somewhat is quite like traditional, uh, quote unquote, uh, archival work. Uh, and somehow that it relates directly to the museum collection development. So it always kind of like have to be in, in the, uh, with, the, with the collection building. 
and when we talk collection building, then there's always kind of like, I think that in a way that uh, at that time, I could say the National Gallery is open and in a way that it tried to still follow what is regarded or what was or maybe still regarded as what is considered as a valid historical canons of Southeast Asia. As in, I must say, like probably then it it was what what is regarded as the mainstream. I think that if we can put it that way, uh, because then I think that it's the purpose at that time. It was uh, still kind of like to introduce uh, this Southeast Asia, South Asian modern art to public knowledge. So then the archival work uh, somehow kind of like happened. And then I have to be in uh, that narrative. And, uh, so, but as well, but my, but that's the thing. Like uh, the what are we regarded as canon <laughs> as in Southeast Asian uh, art history? I think that is still kind of like still very. Uh, I, I, I can say like uh, because I work with the archive, and that's what I try to point out is that like very choppy. Uh, and it's somehow like the whole like the idea of collecting itself like it's uh, like building the Southeast Asian or a centralized Southeast Asian collection that kind of present the general narrative of Southeast Asia is quite a huge task and uh, I think that in a way that the museum tried to step up on their role it was not easy I think and uh, I think in a way that it was still kind of like trying to touch on the surface while from the archival work, as we can see, it's, uh, uh, it, it's, yeah, I mean, like, uh, in a way that the collection building somehow still kind of like have to rely on the art market. Uh, so what is there in the art market? Well, in the art market itself, as we know, um, uh, well, I'm, I must say probably not like the most, should not be the only place you know, like uh, discover or let's say dig up uh, this whole or, or try to, or, or, this, or, tr or the only place to try to build the collection that uh, really represent. Mm. <laughs> uh, so it's a huge task. I mean, like, I mean, like, uh, it's, but I think that because like the museum and collection uh, building itself is quite new, especially like in Southeast Asia. Uh, or in our, let's say, uh, like how, how institutionalization of uh, art has been, uh, like, yeah, like, for, uh, and especially like, for example, like in the, in the, uh, in the Singapore based institution, or, you know, like, uh, uh, that has to have lots of cooperation, because like most of the what, what is regarded as like, let's say, the best art, the best collection is still, you know, like in the state museums in the respective countries, for instance. And the idea of what is Southeast Asia itself, you know, it keeps on evolving, right? Like, is it the ASEAN uh, definition of Southeast Asia or is it like uh, uh, a new definition of uh, Southeast Asia? Like, I think that the the three other speakers have presented like a new perspective like, or a broader perspective on what we, something that is more than just kind of like a geopolitical condition uh, or, as, or as the archival uh, uh, study shows that uh, there's a lot of like relation, <laughs> I was worrying Patrick's word, but that the whole like, you know, like uh, interrelations of, uh, especially in the modern art, so is it, uh, our history not only bordered or not only uh, what we got the uh, uh, interrelational activities of artists in the modern, but in the early modern uh, Southeast Asian art, not only like in the ASEAN <laughs> region uh, or countries, but also there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, exchange with India, for example. Uh, that shape up the idea of modern art in Southeast Asia. So 
I think that we, uh, I don't know, again, like, uh, I don't know if it, this answers your question, Julie, but uh, I think, yeah, that's the challenge on how state sponsored or public institution uh, like museums that pick up on the role of, let's say, trying to present like a narrative have to be open for alternatives or different methods of uh, presenting like the Southeast Asian-ness or narratives. That's my take, my experience. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mbak Farah. Uh... That's really also uh, us uh, because of the uh, the second part of the question also uh, about, about the uh, social engage art also. She would like to hear from Ba Nuning. So I will read uh, the question yeah, with reference, uh, reference as well to Nuraini's presentation on social engage art. Do you have any thought on how the archive might be able to accommodate this transient or relational form? How might how might this form of engagement be productively documented for future research? Silakan, Mbak Nuning. Thank you, Shuli, uh, for the question. It's very important question. Uh, yeah, lots of... So basically, I'm talking about uh, non-paper uh, kind of archives. Yeah, and uh, the archiving... Uh, as a process, as and and as a product, uh, both uh, here refers to uh, like a creative process, uh, which targets uh, cultural material or practices that are regarded uh, precious, uh, precarious, or vulnerable, uh, and by that they uh, by doing that they also against. Uh, the state imaginary uh, of archive, especially uh, what is regarded as important and, and what is not. And so that is uh, one way of responding to, uh, to your question. So they completely following uh, different logic of, of archiving uh, that, that is um, designed by, by the state for instance, and because, and they are uh, doing it through, uh, it's, they realize that it, it's, it's really an ongoing pro process that is uh, also following with their own uh, exploration of uh, their way of seeking connections uh, with their multiple past. I think, uh, yeah, and, uh, Another way is uh, that makes their archiving practices is different is because uh, they acknowledge uh, various uh, forms and people and custodians uh, of the knowledge, that traditional uh, custodians of the knowledge. So it's really, uh, but it has to be following their own vision as well about uh, what they want to answer um, to address their own problems in their en environment. So the, the kind of archives that they collect is actually following that logic. So it's, it's, it's growing. I hope uh, I can answer uh, your question. I think that Julie is the direct I think that maybe Shuli still directed the question to me. Sorry, I I didn't really notice that. Sorry, but <laughs> okay, uh, that's uh, that's uh, okay. Maybe I my from my end. I think that in terms of uh, my my role or my position as a, an archival system builder mm. or something or like an archival institution mm. end. I think. And uh, but uh, it's uh, I. It's 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 a quite difficult question, as in I mean, like in terms of let's say socially engaged art, uh, and how uh, when when I speak about the archive, somehow like my my work with archiving somehow relates. So uh, I think that it's more focused on I think that uh, again like that's why I emphasize on uh, like 
usually when, when I work in archiving, I focus more on the, like I said, the birth of uh, the, the modern era in Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and in, in a way that AKA is, is, is mainly is analog to digitize. It's mm -hmm. an analog to digitize work. And that's what I've been doing uh, with, the, with the teams, whether at IPA or uh, at the National Gallery of Singapore. So in a way that it's, uh, it's the digitization somehow kind of like works. Uh, when the, the digitization works, uh, focusing on that, you know, like uh, in that method, as in like from you know, like digitizing something physical or uh, analog to become like digital asset. While when we talk about socially engaged art, I can be corrected. I mean, like, I think that uh, it relates so much on, and this is a big question in archiving also, how do we, how do we deal with born digital archive and, and the modes of their production now? Uh, like it, I think that in terms of, you know, like relational works, for example, I mean, it's a, uh, it doesn't really like as it's not as simple as you know like you have somebody documented, go to the place and and take photo or something like that, right? Like all these kind of like collect the ephemera, like like what we did with the analog archives. But now, I mean like it takes forms in in these like let's say the, I mean the digital, how the digital sphere and technology has been going on to accommodate those relations in mean, like in, in the internet, social media. Uh, the the web itself, how it grows, and correspondence. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it's. I must say, I'm. I prefer to be to be analog native, and I think it's a question for like the like this. Let's say the new generation. In a way that it's all it relates so much also than how we, how big data has been. Uh, developing, let's say, in the in this era. Um, I think that in a way, like, we have to go, we have to, uh, we have to think, I mean, like, technically, we have to think different methods or like a new relevant methods on how to archive or how to uh, respond. Because it, in a way that it's already archived, most of them are already archived as well. Like in the internet sphere, for example, or it just grows by itself. So then I think it's a, it's a, it needs a totally different perspective uh, in how we archive, uh, like let's say, this, uh, let's say contemporary, like new contemporary that exists beyond uh, physical analog uh, objects and also beyond, you know, like just kind of like is the space and objects and just... I think uh, we yeah 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 if I can add uh, a bit uh, a bit more uh, we can also talk about uh, embodied archives as well right in this regard like in relation to Shirley's question because uh, for instance uh, in my research, uh, this is uh, the kind of archiving that they doing it themselves. And uh, in a way they are uh, archiving their own lives and they are uh, actively uh, seeking uh, the source of knowledge that they want to uh, learn, they, what kind of archive that they want to learn and, and as a way of uh, looking or relearning about their past, they are uh, trying to embody uh, that, practicing it uh, uh, at the same time. That's that's my uh, observation so far. Yeah, that lead to another point. That another point, you know, like uh, embodied archives. Like you not only collect the archives and then store it in. A uh, certain designated <clears throat> space, but but you you practice it, and yeah, that's what I found. Or well, in a way that it also opens up like a new ways of uh, seeing, or like how we actually define the archive, right? Like uh, that's why, like what what like I uh, I mentioned, like what I said, what we did, uh, what 
me mm-hmm. and my kindred and then it's basically like a traditional archive but then I mean like how we and so the new generation of digital native for mm-hmm. example I mean like they 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 experience the archive I think it's very interesting conversation I mean uh, apart from it's the not method, a topic uh, for my channel <laughs> <laughs> apart from the method or uh, thinking about how the uh, shifting of this contemporary expression mm. also uh, through uh, archive, which I think it's a big, big question, uh, especially when Ban Ning said that uh, for her that art is less about uh, object or uh, individual. Mm. So I think embodied archive, I think uh, also uh, um, answer that, but also it's also a question of uh, institution, right? Uh, yeah relate to the power as well, or maybe, or uh, nation state as well. Uh, but uh, I think we can move to another question. <laughs> the, we have a question for uh, Sir Patrick. Uh, this is uh, from Nola Picard. Uh, I think it is related to your um, um, poetic of relation uh, that, that you mentioned about uh, poetic of relation from Edward Luisang. And the question is, uh, does that also relate with geopoetics, Mr. Mm-hmm. Flores? Very curious about what you meant when using the term geopoetics I have heard years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I use that word often as a way to uh, disperse, <clears throat> to disperse uh, the sedimentation, the sedimentation of uh, certain norms, uh, or expectations that uh, are related to the geopolitical. So uh, the the so it's it's a kind of it's a maneuver a, a away from the geopolitical. Uh, uh, the geopolitical has has like overdetermined or overly governed ideas about identity or regionality, even, even notions of the global or the international. So uh, with the geopoetic, I think uh, the geopoetic disrupts certain expectations about uh, uh, the, the, uh, the potency of the word uh, geopolitical. Also, I, I wanted to, I want to foreground the affective subjectivity, the affective subjectivity that uh, might be flattened or, you know, oversimplified by the geopolitical. And with Glissant's idea of uh, poetics of relation, then the the poetic moment uh, uh, significantly extends and extends to the curatorial, to the curatorial, instantiation to the how the, the the curation of of art in space is also a uh, geopoetic uh, procedure so it's uh, the geopoetic doesn't it's not a thematization but it is uh, it performs uh, it performs the uh, the the space in relation to whatever mediated uh, materials are there uh, in, 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 I mean, before you. Second, uh, I also wanted to move away from determinisms, and I think Simon already mentioned it, the determinism of uh, geography, for instance. Although I also believe that geography has an agency, uh, especially if you look at it from the point of view of Arjuna Padurai, who talks about process geography, that it is fluid, it is, uh, dynamic, porous, uh, and so on and so forth. So the geopoetic uh, demonstrates the idea that uh, expressive form and place uh, co-produce each other. That uh, it's not like one colonizing colonizing uh, the other. So I think that's, uh, that's how I, uh, I, I, I discuss <laughs> geopoetics, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Patrick. Um, and now we move to the question for uh, Simon. Uh, this is from Amira Velda Priono. Uh, speaking about translation, do you think that linguistic have some relation with contemporary art? 
Thank you. Thank you for the question. But uh, you, you, you know, it's uh, whether linguistic have anything to do with contemporary. I, 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 I'm not sure if I see the connection that you have made there. Uh, up here, or not. Uh, maybe I'm missing some context and I, I know I made some reference to linguistic in my interpretation of the Seka Jagat motif in comparison to you know other motifs such as Kawong, Jeplo, Papalang. But if you do not mind, would you like to unmute yourself and uh, so that uh, to help clarify your question? Mungkin bisa ditanya dalam bahasa Indonesia juga just to help me understand uh, why you think I am best suited to help you uh, understand this connection between linguistic and contemporary art. Mm. Uh, can we the help uh, to unmute? Uh... Oh, tak boleh un unmute ya. Oh, because they can't join, is it? Um. Yeah, I I don't I don't think that uh, okay, <laughs> the audience uh, can uh, open. So maybe uh, do you mind uh, giving some more context, Leona, in the Q and A? Uh, we can move yeah, on I think, to the next. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, uh, I've already uh, asked uh, Amel, um, Amira Felda Piano to talk. So um, uh, you, hello, I, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah silakan. Uh, yeah. So when you mention translation, uh, I would I almost thinking translation about text or mm -hmm. uh, text between art, and I think it's uh, I think is if there's any relation with linguistic. So trans translation and linguistic almost uh, related, but is there any more related thing in from linguistic to contemporary art, perhaps or or if it's tr another translation from word or a picture? Right, or a translation from picture. Yeah, I, 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 I guess so. Uh, uh, let me see if I understand uh, uh, where you are trying to get at. I think, for example, uh, one of the things that I'm been quite obsessed by is really trying to understand like an intellectual genealogy of like a term, a simple term like gamba, right? Which we take for granted as picture, uh, but it emerges uh, in uh, Malay language and later on Indonesian and like Malaysian language kind of like discourse uh, uh, with uh, 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 being sort of like, you know, discussed in very certain sort of like ways and, 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 and it has, uh, and, and to do this sort of like archaeology of the kind mm. of, like the way we understand Gambar according to different periods in history will uh, perhaps allow us to understand uh, maybe a, a, a local perspective on what the power of the image is. Or, or what we understand the image to sort of like do, or what can the image sort of like do at a particular point in time, at a, uh, serving what, what particular sort of like ends uh, within the sort of like Malay language uh, kind of like cultural sphere. So uh, if we were to sort of like do this translation is really to sort of make that kind of uh, leap, right? That I think someone like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, James Warren. Uh, who works on the Sulu zone, he calls it like a passing over. You need to really sort of like jump over the, the sort of chasm uh, uh, really by cultivating a kind of like empathy to see from a kind of, his, to see from a historical perspective. Uh, uh, and I see translation principally grounded uh, in that kind of like sensibility of uh, willing to sort of like, you know, pass over and have that kind of historical imagination uh, to rethink what we understand to be perhaps even some of the most, uh, uh, what we assume to be some of the most sort of like basic vocabulary of art in this part of the world. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, part of it has to uh, uh, do with something that uh, an essay by, Arundhati Roy that has been, uh, that I've also 
been quite fascinated by and which is asking, you know, in the post-colonial context, what is the most morally appropriate language in which to think and write in. And, uh, you know, in the India context, uh, mm -hmm. as a, in the post-colonial India sort of like context, uh, of course, the role of English as a language fraught with imperial legacy is something that is heatedly discussed, but then no other, but each language uh, community wouldn't want another language community to dominate over them by uh, creating a new uh, stage sanctioned kind of official language. Right? Uh, therefore, uh, in answering this question, then Roy ultimately concludes that perhaps the most morally appropriate language is a language of translation. Uh, and therefore, thinking along that line, then maybe we want to, uh, I really want to sort of like think of the self as having the opportunity to exist between multiple sort of like vectors and maybe uh, the work that we do is uh, not so much to sort of like find our, 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 our place in the world, but really to sort of like try to smuggle or carry meanings across different interpretive frames. Okay, thank you. That's well informed. Uh, thank you, Simon, uh, for the answer. I'm sorry that uh, I lost my connection uh, earlier, so I missed uh, part, partly your uh, answer. Uh, but I think uh, we are nearly at the end of the uh, program. Uh, nevertheless, I would like to, uh, to share one more uh, question, I think, from the audience. Uh, but, Widi, would you like... Uh, to help me to to read uh, the question because I, I lost the, the question uh, because you know I remember that the, the question is from a student uh, he's a or she a chemistry student that would like to uh, learn about curatorship uh, because we, we we talk quite uh, a lot about education as well as pedagogy so uh, I think it's interesting also to to, to have the question from the uh, from this uh, student here, and I will leave to the panelists who will answer this question. And uh, yeah, we did please uh, help me to uh, read the yes, question. No, no worries. <laughs> okay, so this is from Andrea Penaluza. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. So good afternoon. I am currently a chemistry student. However, I have interest in anthropology and museum studies. If ever in the future, I opt to take a career pathway regarding art curation, do I still need to have further studies or earn another bachelor's degree? Thank you. So who would like to answer first? <laughs> Maybe we can start with you, Sir Patrick. Uh, I, well, you please. Of course, uh, basic knowledge about curation helps, but I advised against the over education. Right. I think don't over educate yourself and uh, learn from uh, other ways of uh, knowing uh, the world uh, through disciplines that might not necessarily appear related to art mm. or curatorship. I think uh, one has to broaden the archive of experience and also of uh, intuition. And uh, oftentimes the academy kills that <laughs> because of the bureaucracy of learning. Although uh, the academy also offers something intellectually intense, and you should also benefit from it. Uh, what I'm saying is that you don't put all your eggs in one basket, no? If that idiom makes sense. So uh, yeah, so ex expand uh, different ways of learning about uh, mediating material. Uh, curation is mediating material. So there are many ways to do that. Thank you, Sir Patrick. Now we'll go to Mbawawa. <laughs> My entitled to give recommendation. I mean, I, I go with Sir Patrick. <laughs> mm. But I think experience is the best. Yeah. <laughs> Teacher, I mean, I cannot speak on behalf of uh, academia. I'm not on academia. But I mean, like, uh, uh, yes, I mean, I think that it, to some degree, you 
need some kind of like an academic training to be a curator or like to kind of like maybe more like in entering the curatorship frequency or something like that. <laughs> but still, it's just just uh, just do just do. <laughs> that's that's my question and my advice. I leave it to Lunding and Simon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think I uh it's it's very interesting question actually. I I think yeah I completely agree with Patrick. Uh, I think art is about uh, the whole thing is about a way of uh, trying to uh, find answer if we can really find an answer uh, and to identify you know uh, problems uh, whatever that means and that uh, as a way of Uh, doing that uh, through art, it can it can be from anywhere. And I personally, uh, in other conversation with Kunji uh, and other people, I'm I'm really against uh, specialization of uh, academic or or discipline. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like that. I I think uh, ideally it should be uh, if we are willing to engage ourselves to be an intellectual in whatever field we have to be uh, like a spider intellectuals it's my way of saying that we should be able to um, put our feet in in everywhere you know and and that also mean we can enter art through many disciplines okay last one simon do you have any addition <laughs> <laughs> maybe a very practical advice I imagine you're coming as a chemistry student you probably have a very uh, a bit of a romantic sort of like view on oh, like concept anthropology or even what goes on in the museum right so you might uh, want to consider uh, doing an internship or taking up a volunteership uh, just to sort of like test water and see if you actually really like uh, the kind of job that uh, The, the, the kind of like DPs that uh, you know that's attached to you know doing museum work uh, uh, chances are you might not even sort of like, like it and then you can sort of like go on and explore something else but uh, you know all these sort of like work placement does give you an opportunity to have a taste uh, a, a very mind of course then then you can decide whether you want to sort of like you know pursue uh, education and uh, take this as a sort of like serious uh, career option for you in the future. Bearing in mind, of course, this is a field that is also high, very highly privileged, especially at the institutional sort of like level. So unless you are, you have very, very strong family connections, uh, chances are you have to start early and, and you know, you're going to start all the way from the bottom round and, but you know, Therefore, maybe sort of like start, starting early is not a bad thing if, if we have to sort of like, you know, climb our way up. Thank you, Simon. Um, yeah, I think finally we have arrived at the end of this uh, panel discussion. Uh, thank you very much to all the panelists uh, for coming together and sharing your knowledge this afternoon and this morning with us. Uh, I hope to see you all in person near future and thank you also for uh, all the viewers uh, that have followed our discussion and i encourage you all to learn more about museum machan's uh, upcoming public program on our website museummachan.org as well as our social media channel and then uh, i will give back the mic to widi terima kasih widi Thank you, Asep, for moderating the event although while struggling with your internet connection. Thank you very much. We all know the internet here is tough. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sir Patrick, uh, for uh, joining this program for Philippines. Simon, for joining this from Malaysia. And Banuning, even further from uh, uh, from ne- the Netherlands. Mawawa, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. Thank you very much also for everyone who stayed with us until the end of the program. Uh, we would like to hear about your um, feedback regarding our program. So um, we are going to drop the uh, a survey link in the chat box. So please spare a bit of your time, about less than five minutes, just to let us know what, what we can improve on our programs and everything. Also for our viewers in Jakarta, if you have any time, Mishu Macam is already open for public. 
So if you have any uh, spare time to visit the museum, so you can see the ones behind me. <laughs> this is what the the panel discussion is based on, the stories of across the rising rank exhibition that is uh, co-curated by ASEP and uh, Jung ok -Jung. So again, I'd like to thank um, ASEAN for the ASEAN, uh, ASEAN Foundation and ASEAN Korea Cooperation Fund for uh, making this public program happen as well as the exhibition. Um, yeah, I guess I speak too much now. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe that's all for today. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great week and, and stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Bye. 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 Bye.